Welcome back to the part 2 tutorial of Fast API in Python. In this video, I'll show you how to create the most basic API using Fast API. You'll learn the basic syntax of Fast API, how to run it, and check the results. Let's get your first API up and running. Hi everyone, I'm Lian. Welcome to Just Into Data where data science and data engineer materials are shared and made simpler for you. In the previous video, we've set up a new project Fast API Tutorial in PyCharm. Let's create a new Python file under this directory. We'll just call it main. Now we are ready to write the code for your very first API. First, from Fast API, import FastAPI. So we've already installed FastAPI in the previous lesson. We're just importing a class called FastAPI from it. Then we set up a variable called app. It is an instance of the class FastAPI. And this app is where we'll be focusing on creating our API. Before defining the API, I would like to review some basic concepts of it. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is the connections between different computer programs. It is a type of software interface that offers a service to other software. Many companies offer public APIs over the internet. If a program outside the company wants to communicate with the company, it can go through those APIs. So you can think of those APIs as receptionist of the company. The basic procedure can be a web browser, also can be called the client, since HTTP requests to a web API, and the API operates and sends back responses. So here is another important concept, HTTP requests. There are different types of requests. We'll cover five common HTTP operations or methods. Get, this is used to retrieve data. It is a read-only operation. The post operation can be used to send data to the API to create data. Put and patch, these two are both used to send and update data, but put is mainly used for full update, while patch is mainly for partial update. Lastly, there's also the delete operation. We can use it to delete data. Among these operations, get is the only operation that's mainly for retrieving data from the API. The rest for the post, put, patch, and delete are all sending data to the API, but for different purposes. We'll see examples of all of them in the following tutorials. All right. Now back to our most basic API. We have the variable app set up as an instance of the class FastAPI. Now let's define its operations. Let's do at app.get for the get operation, followed by parentheses with a quote of slash. So the at here is a Python syntax for a decorator. The decorator is like a decoration for a function. Below the decorator, we can define the function or action that will happen when a get request is sent. So let's put the function below this decorator. Say def. This is the same syntax of defining a Python function. We'll call the function my first fast API. Parenthesis with no arguments, colon, then on the next line, we'll simply ask the function to return a dictionary. So with key, output, and value, my first API. We can return other objects too, but dictionary is a common type to use. So again, this whole thing is saying whenever there is a get request sent to this URL, this function below will be called and it will return a dictionary shown here. That's it. This is all we have for our first very basic fast API. 
Let's save it and run it. We'll open the terminal and type in command uvcorn, which is a server we've downloaded in the previous tutorial. Then main. This main is the name of the Python file or module. If you've named it something else, please change it accordingly. Then colon app. So this app is referring to the object app here that we've created. Again, if you use a different variable name, please just change it accordingly. Then dash dash reload. This makes the server restarts after any code changes, so we can see the updated version. It's only needed for development. All right, we can press enter to execute this command. Now our API is live. Let's check it. So as you can see, our API is running on this URL, on the local computer. Let's copy it and go to the browser. We'll paste the URL in this tab. If you run this, FastAPI should call the function we've defined below the decorator. There it is. It returns something that looks like the dictionary we've defined. Output, my first API. This is great. But this is actually not a Python dictionary anymore. This is in JSON format. FastAPI automatically converted the Python dictionary to JSON. Let's have a quick review. What is JSON format? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is a standard text-based data format, so it's shown as a string. It can be used for representing and transmitting structured data, including attribute value pairs, like dictionaries, and arrays. It is commonly used in web applications. For example, as we've seen, for our API, we got response in JSON format. So back to our API response, this response is in JSON format. Besides checking the API in the browser, FastAPI also provides automatic documentation. For example, we can add after this URL slash docs. This automatic and interactive documentation is provided by Swagger UI. In this visual documentation, we can interact with and test our API. You can see that we have the get operation set up, and here displays my first fast API. This is what we've named the function. Let's click here to expand its details. Then we'll click try it out. And since we didn't set up any parameters, there's nothing we need to specify. So let's simply execute it. The Swagger user interface will communicate with our API and display the results on the screen. There, the API generated response. Here is the server response. The response code is 200. A 200 response code means everything was okay. So the operation was successful. There are other response codes with different meanings. We'll see more of them in the later videos. But for now, just know that if you see a 200 code, then the operation was successful. Then we can see that the response body is here, the same JSON response we've seen when calling the URL directly. We can also see its headers for more information. This is great. If you don't like this documentation system, FastAPI also offers another default one. So instead of docs, we can change here to redoc. This is another automatic documentation system. Please feel free to try it out too. That's it. In this tutorial, you build the most basic API with FastAPI, so you've learned the basics of FastAPI. Now you're ready to build a more realistic API. Stay tuned for the next video. We'll add paths to the API. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.